I am Sayyid Muhammad Yunus Qadri, Assistant Professor of Economics, Government Premier College 2. I am going to present you the lecture of economics for first year commerce student. Economics for first year is divided into two topics. One is the microeconomics and the second one is the macroeconomics. So first we should have to start the economics with the introduction of the economics that is the what is they find out the question about what it what is economics and then the differentiation between micro and macroeconomics. The introduction economics is a science that deal with production, exchange and consumption of various commodities in economic system. So we if we take this definition in detail that economics is a science. What do you mean by the science? Science is a, the, depending upon some experiment. If you have say something, theorize something, you have to prove it with your experiment. If the experiment is conducted in a lab, it is called the pure science. If the experiment is conducted in a say, society or in the population, it is termed as the social science. So economics is a social science, not a pure science. Everything in the economics which is proven experimentally is the part of the economics and the, part, the things which cannot be proven is not at all the part of the economics. That is why it is considered to be the science, a social science. Now the another question is define the economics uh, by Adam Smith, Marshall, Robbins and other economists. So the main point of the definition of Adam Smith, which is the economist of uh, 18th century, mid of 18th century, that is 1723 to 1790. And this another economics which we study is the Alfred Marshall. It is a 19th century economist, 1842 to 1924. And uh, the most important economist is the uh, Robinson. Uh, I think it is the 20th, 20th century economist. The main point of the Adam Smith is the wealth. The main point of the Alfred Marshall is welfare. And the Robbins is scarcity. These are the three economists which we will study in detail for, to find out the definition of economics. The Paul Samuelson definition of economics is not at all the part of a syllabus. Definition of economics by Adam Smith. Uh, Adam Smith is the 18th century economist. He wrote his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and the Causes of the Wealth of Nation, in 1776. He is considered to be the father of economics. In short, his book name is Wealth of Nation. In that book, he defined the economics as the science of wealth. He explained how the nation wealth is created. He considered that the individual in this society wants to promote only his own gain. That is, in the individual is self-interested. The main point here is self-interested. And his, and this, he is led by an invisible hand to promote the interest of the society. Though he has no real intention to promote the society's interest. That is what the definition is all about. So the two points we should have to keep, the students should have to keep in mind whenever writing about the definition of economics is that the individual we consider to be the self-interested. Self-interested is just have to care about it. And if all the individuals in a society is behaving like that, being self-interested, the and would like to promote his own wants rather than the other things that is sympathy and other things, so the whole uh, society will gain from that behavior. Although his prom his intention is not for the society, but individually, if everybody is doing that thing, then it will promote the wealth of the society or in the, at the end, the wealth of the nation. And that uh, will be promoted by the invisible hand. Invisible hand <coughs> is not at all invisible in that sense. It is the market forces, which we later discuss is the demand and supply 
on other forces uh, which uh, will help to uh, make the economy to go further or to be in equilibrium. So the in the Adam Smith, the definition is there. You should have to pinpoint those point, uh, the things. That is, one is that it is self-interested. The second one is that it is the invisible head that promote the interest of whole, so whole society or trigger that uh, uh, interest. The criticism of Adam Smith theory, the always the criticism will come from the definition. If you know the basic points of the definition, you can easily criticize any statement or theory. So you have to know the statement, the, the, or the points, the main points of the statement. The main point, as I've told you earlier, is that of the individual is self-interested. You have to criticize is that individual is not self-interested. Individual not only do uh, the things for their own sake, but the sake of the other people, particularly their relatives, their father, mother, mother, their uh, other neighbors, and their own community. So the point of welfare is ignored by the Adam Smith. And you know that that is not at all your own behavior. As a Muslim, your behavior is to safeguard the interest of the other. Your interest will become a secondary, the primary motive is to safeguard the interest of. That is why what the fathers are doing for their children, the mother are doing for their children, the children are doing for their parents, and all the societies are doing for their uh, poor class, for, uh, for the other loved ones. So you, uh, th that definition is not correct in that point of view. The second is invisible hand. Invisible hand means market forces automatically correct whatever is deficiency is there in, in the econ and will the promote the na in nation interest. But uh, uh, as you know, in this, <coughs> uh, the uh, instead of the market, government also play a, a pivotal role. That is what happened in 1930 Great Depression and now in coronavirus depression, uh, period of the uh, economic depression, the government uh, state will come and give the uh, bailout program. So according to Smith, the government should not have, uh, not have to play the role. The market should have to play the role. That is wrong. So that was criticized by the Keynes, particularly in 1930, and now with the economy, other economists also criticized that thing. Now, the definition of Alfred Marshall, the another economist, which uh, defined that uh, what is the what economics is all about, and criticized the Adam Smith. Alfred Marchand uh, is the uh, late 19th and 20th century economist, wrote his book, Principle of Economics, in 1890, in which he defines the political economy, or the economy is the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. So he particularly defined the political economics. Economics is not at all only related to wealth. It is the study of mankind in its own ordinary business of life, which part of the economics is that it, uh, it examines the individual's material welfare of or the well-being of the human being. So his basic concept is that, that a economics is a part of the a study of mankind or the human being, which part of the human being? It is the material welfare or well-being. So the two points should have to note it there. It is the study of mankind. It is not at all the study of the plants or the animals or the envi uh, or the other, other things. It is the part of the study of the mankind. Which part of the mankind? It's part of the mankind is the material well-being of the mankind. So you should have to uh, note down these two points about the uh, Alfred Marshall. Now the criticism about the Marshall definition of economics told you earlier the, def uh, the criticism will come from the definition. What are the parts of the definition? So it is the economics, the study of human being. 
so oh, no criticism about it is the part of the human being all right all right but what part of the human being material aspects of the human being the material aspects there are two aspects of the human being one is its spiritual and then the second one is that of its material material means madda and the spiritual means true so both the are the essential parts of the human being some of the immaterial things are also important for human being also some of the spiritual parts of the a human being are also for, for very important particularly for us as a religious person or the being a being a muslim we know that uh, our part uh, our, our mostly our part is consist of our uh, religion that is spirituality what should we should have to eat what should have to wear what we should have to do is uh, not at all the matter of our own interest it is the interest of the a uh, god so we should have to take the things from the a uh, revelation or, or the sahifa so so uh, in economics they denied that things and i told you earlier the economics also is a science that is by denied all the things which is not at all uh, been experimentally proved but there are some other part of the economics which is very, the, so this uh, economics part which is the material well being of the uh, economy uh, of the human being is a very minute part of this so uh, uh, the other the uh, the whole concept of economics is uh, i think is is contracted inside uh, with very limited uh, meanings so it will be enlarged and been uh, criticized by the robins that that is not at all the true definition of economics now what will be the true definition of economics we can we can see in the robins definition of economics now the definition of robins how he defines or defined the economics in 1932 and its its definition is very comprehensive one he defined economics in his book an essay on the nature and significance of economic science according to him economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses so there are also two or three points which you should have to remember in order to get got the understanding about this definition economics is a science yes it is proven by the other ones to which studies human behavior same as that of the marshall marshall and economics is a science smith marshall and robbins are they, this is the company uh, that is the i think they have uh, uh, have the common thing that economics is a science Uh, which study the human behavior marshall and robbins is in the same point that the it is the he study of the human but which part of the study of the it is uh, he said that it is the uh, relationship between the ends and scarce means ends is what and the means is what if you do understand it then you can understand the whole the economics is and is uh, considered to be the want and the means are the resources here the ends that is wants according to robbins and uh, other economists and philosopher the wants of an human being is unlimited that is uh, they have considered the human being nature is that uh, he would like to get more and more and more and more in a uh, quran is saying al hakum at takasur takasur you can see it means getting more and more of it. so the is that that type of the creature who is, is always looking forward for the want maximization and but on the other hand once you have the want is unlimited the whatever resources are are out there should be the scarce cannot meet your ends so if you would like here you would like to go uh, to the uh, usa america if you would like to go to the moon if you would like to uh, eat uh, uh, the different things you would like to eat the pizza but here in this corona period the uh, the the shops are closed so you 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 would like to have that thing but you cannot have because the resources are not there resources uh, do not mean you don't have the uh, monetary resources the others means are also not there means you do not have the transportation the shops are closed so you cannot have it if you would like to go to usa uh, if you would like to go to switzerland if you would like to go to so you don't have the 
the monetary resources. You don't have the the uh, the, the planes are not, uh, not, uh, not going. All the airports are closed. So the resources are not there. That is why you cannot meet. But that is your desire. And now it is the duty of the society. It is the duty of the state, or it is the duty of the everyone and for you yourself to is to find out the continuously looking forward for the means to fulfill the wants of the human being. So a good uh, state is that we'll find out those resources. That is called the progress. It's always progressing and progressing. And you are now becoming a very progressive country. And then uh, you have uh, lots of things in this world is out there. But the wants are not uh, not been fulfilled. Uh, so this is, he's saying that the wants are. Now we have to make the criticism on this definition too. Now critically evaluate the definition of the Robbins. As I have told you earlier, and keep on saying that the criticism will come from the a definition. And all the teachers, I should have to say, and all the students, they have to put more and more emphasis on their own writing, rather than to copy from someone else uh, notes or anyone else uh, writing. You have to create those type of abilities in which the students can write the things by their own self. And teachers should have to evaluate like that. Those who are writing the things with, with their own words have to give in more marks. And those who are giving the, the stereotype of definition should be giving lesser marks. A grammatical mistakes might be there when the students are writing in their own words, whether in English or Urdu some mistakes, but the concept is clear to give them the more and more, more the full mark should be given to the student if the uh, concept is clear, somebody's sentence is not been clear, that should, so, so leave it. So that is why how the, you can encourage the students to write in there. The criticism will come uh, from the same definition, definition, what is the definition, two parts of the definition, one is that it is the, uh, the wants are uh, unlimited, you can easily criticize the wants are not unlimited, for the human being the wants are should be limited one, it should uh, be according to our means, otherwise we cannot be fulfill our own means. So the resources are, uh, uh, are scarce, of course, once these wants are uh, unlimited, if the wants are limited, then the resources, uh, no, is no problem for the resources. In economics, that is the major problem of the resources, how to fulfill uh, the wants according to the, how the, the resources. We have to enhance the resources uh, continuously and working for it. So that is one of the criticism of that study. That is, it is only covers the micro part of the economics, not at all the other parts of the economics, that is the welfare part of the economics, and the growth part of the economics, and the development part, which was later by, uh, defined by the uh, Mr. Paul Simonson, uh, 21st century economist. We'll not study the, his uh, definition. This is the uh, end of the part of the definition, how to we can define and criticize the A3 definition of economics. Now the, you have done the all the three questions, definition of economics, whether by the, uh, either by the Smith or by the Marshall or by the uh, Robbins, and then uh, critically evalu uh, evaluate, evaluate the definition of uh, Smith, uh, Robbins, and Marshall. These type of questions will come in the exam. You should have to know the answer very easily. If you know the pin point, pin main points of this, uh, these definition, you can easily do it. You know that the uh, the, uh, the wealth is the main point of the uh, Smith. Uh, welfare is the uh, welfare of the uh, material welfare of the human being is the main point of the Marshall, and the ends and means are the main main points of the Robbins definition. Which definition do you think is the best one? Uh, Again, I told you, write it down in your way. I think, in my opinion, uh, Robin's definition is the more comprehensive one. For whole the microeconomics concept is depending upon uh, uh, Robin's definition. Here in microeconomics, we would like to find out that thing. The human being, is, uh, his wants are unlimited. We have to find out the resources to fulfill that wants. That is why the theory, theory of demand will emerge those who would like to have a more and more uh, wants will have lesser and lesser when the demand is in, in will, lesser, will, uh, will demand lesser and lesser if the prices are increasing. And for, for the producer who would like to more and more and more profit, so it will supply lesser 
if the prices are increasing and uh, on the other way supply more if the prices are decreasing. So it depends upon the Robbins definition of economics. So Robbins definition is more comprehensive one. So if the question will come which which type of things you can easily say the Robbins definition is the more comprehensive, although there are other, uh, Paul Simonson's definition is of growth and development is out, out there, or the Amartya Sen definition of the uh, development is out there, but you don't have to concentrate in these three definitions. As I've told you in the introduction, the macro, uh, the economics is uh, for the intermediate course is uh, bifurcated into micro and macroeconomics. Uh, we need to know the definition of both microeconomics and the macroeconomics. Micro, micro is the prefix of the very small or very tiny things. Uh, it is the uh, it is the grammatical meaning, but in actually that is not at all meant by the uh, economics. Microeconomics, uh, microeconomics means the some individualistic as aspect of the economics. When we deal with the some individualistic aspect of the economics, that is termed as the microeconomics. So that is the definition of economics. Not at all. This uh, it is not at all the small part of the small part of the economics. It is a very comprehensive part of the main part of the economics. Not lesser than that of the macroeconomics, but it deals only with the individuals. Individualistic level is being discussed. We'll discuss those aspects in uh, microeconomics, like consumer. The two uh, characters in the microeconomics. One is the consumer. Consumer is an individual. That is why we'll deal in the microeconomics producer is an individual that is why we deal with the firm is an individual firm that is why we deal the in the microeconomics then the question uh, the con who is the consumer the consumer is one who consumes the commodity what is the commodity terminology is used in the economics which means anything it is the things which we use as a commodity economic commodity so the consumer is the one who consumes the commodity what is the consumption consumption uh, is nothing but uh, you have to use the commodity or anything for the sake of uh, the satisfaction or utility maximization will concept of utility will come in this microeconomics it is nothing but the measure of satisfaction so the for the sake of satisfaction if use something for the sake of satisfaction that is called the consumption so we are as a Muslim do not consider ourselves as a consumer because we are not using thing for the sake of satisfaction only our motive is to uh, the halal and haram things are there. There is good thing or not good thing that is good for our own religion or not. Uh, that uh, we should have to use more lesser and lesser. That is what uh, we are not at all a consumer there. So consumption is the concept of economics, like the production. What is the production? Production is what you produce anything for the sake of profit maximization. The production is the capitalist production in which you are to pro producing the things for the sake of profit maximization, the welfare and other things are just to make the uh, fool of you. So main motive of the producer is the profit maximization. The consumer motive is that of the uh, uh, utility or the want maximization. So we will study that in the microeconomics term as the consumer's behavior. It is the part of the demand supply and the market is that of the consumer's behavior will study the elasticity of demand that and the, that thing will be discussed in the consumers with the production side or the producer behavior is uh, is the theory of production and the theory of firm where how the firm will maximize uh, at what point the production output and price the, uh, the, uh, the firm will maximize its product production under perfect competitive market or imperfectly competitive market this will be discussed in the theory of the firm so that is the definition of microeconomics now the definition of uh, macroeconomics Macroeconomics and our macro means big, not, not at all the small and big is not at all the concept of the macro or microeconomics. Uh, it is that uh, it is the gravity, uh, uh, it is the meaning by the dictionary, it is not all meant by this. In the macroeconomics, we deal with the you know, on the aggregate level rather than individualistic level, we have to deal with the aggregate level, aggregate part, all the parts of the economy when we combine together is the part of the uh, macroeconomics. Aggregate means, uh, if you say that the, it is uh, aggregate means for the national level. In the national level, aggregate all the consumer products, production, consumption, uh, and all the expenses, all the trade, the, uh, export and import when combined. It is a part of the macroeconomics. 
So uh, there, uh, it don't mean that is a big part, part of the economics. It is the comprehensive or more aggregate part of the economics. We deal with the government level of discussion is coming, uh, coming in. Now the question that is, what is the difference between the micro and macro economics? So micro is individual and the macro is aggregate level. This is the two uh, very basic point. Now, can you explain it with the example? Yes, we can explain it. If the concept of income in economics when we are dealing in microeconomics, in it means the econ income of Hamid, Mahmoud, Bakar, uh, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Paul Samuelson, on other ones, uh, the, uh, the income, income of a firm, of ABC firm, of any firm, or uh, Pizza Hut firm, and the any, any other firm. So it is the income of uh, some individual firm or individual. It is termed as the micro in the microeconomics. And for on the other end, the macroeconomics, when we are saying income, income of all the nation, or income of Pakistan, income of Pakistan, that is termed as the national income, is the part of the mic macroeconomics, not at all the part of the microeconomics. Income of USA, income of Germany, income of India, that is also termed as GDP, GNP, that is come in the macroeconomics. If you are saying that the price of a commodity is increasing, then its demand is, is decreasing its supply is de increasing. That is the com price of the uh, apple is increasing. Price of the uh, grain is increasing. Pri price uh, of the car is increasing. Price of the petrol is increasing. What will be the impact on the demand of the other thing? That is the part of the microeconomics. When the, on the bundle of the prices of the commodity, that the maximum amount of the prices of the, pr if the pr is increasing, it is termed as the inflation. And that is the part of the mi macroeconomics, not at all the microeconomics. So, and when we are dealing with the budget, budget of a house is the part of the microeconomics, and the budget uh, of the economy is the part of the macroeconomics. So uh, economic, uh, the budget of Pakistan is the part of the macroeconomy. The budget is the fiscal policy. We determine the fiscal policy. The expenditure of uh, of a economy or the government is increasing as is termed as the fiscal policy. And if the uh, money supply is increasing, it is a part of the uh, macroeconomics. So it is not at all the part of the, the income of an individual is increasing. It is a part of the microeconomics. The income of the whole economy is growth is increasing. It is termed as the macroeconomics. That's very simple dif uh, difference between the micro and macroeconomics.